a tip for you as an author to level up your world building. It's a little bit outside of the box, but it's a really cool conversation. So stick with me on this one. I need you to study how certain things impact and affect other things. And a really great way to do that is by studying the wind and going out to a place that is very windy with clothing that is going to be moving in the wind gives you this really cool opportunity to study the impact of the wind and how things affect and cause other things to happen. So you can go anywhere. You can go to the beach like I recently did. It was just on the heels of a hurricane. So it was like the very strong winds, strong rip tides, but it wasn't like direct hurricane. You can go up on a mountain. I live near mountains. I go up there all the time. It is windy up there. You can go to like the park where you know that there is a bit of a wind tunnel in there. You know what areas near you are kind of windy go there or go out on a windy day and wear flappy clothing. So that can be a big skirt. That can be a jacket that you do not have like all buckled up against you. If you have long hair, that's going to be really helpful for you as well. Your goal here is to study how the, Im the wind is impacting everything else around it. So you're focused on how things feel, how things sound, how things are moving, not just on you, but in the world around you. So for me, I was wearing this beautiful skirt at the beach. My hair was blowing in the wind and I had a lot that I could study. The way that it was covering my face with hair every time I tried to move, what happened when I faced into the wind, when I faced away from the wind, when I turned just slightly out of the wind. I focused on how the skirt was moving, how the sand was skittering across the other sand. I paid attention to the waves and the clouds. There's so much you can do, but I've also done this up on a mountain. I go up there and I wear the big skirts and I have the big hair and I can pay attention to how it's moving me, how it's moving the things around me, the grass, the trees, the tall grass, the flowers, the clouds. You can see so much by studying it, how the wind is impacting the world around you and then see how people are engaging with it. So you can actually go out to like a city or to a park or to a very public place and see how these things are impacting other people. In the fall, especially, we get a lot of winds and that will blow the leaves leads across the concrete, across the sidewalk, across things. It will move cars on the roads as you are driving. Study how the wind is moving and how it impacts the world around you because the way that clothing moves, the way that hair moves, the way that the leaves move, or the car moves, or the people kind of dodge around certain things to not get in too much wind. Those are very valuable tips to help level up your writing. The wind is really fun, but you can make it even more fun by dressing the part, by going and doing this research and kind of like documenting it. I love getting like slow-mo footage of these things. I got a really beautiful video of these skirts blowing in slow-mo. That was an accident, but it worked out really, really well. <clears throat> you can pay attention to, you know, all of the things around you can get really cool footage that you can then watch back later on. But it's important to see how people are engaging, interacting, reacting to that wind, how the wind is causing certain things to happen, how the different animals are moving around, how the plant life is moving around. The wind is a really unique and interesting study because you can't control it. It comes in in different ways in different places and it impacts everything. And you can find wind everywhere. It's not like you have to go to a beach. You don't have to go to a mountain. So you're not isolated to one specific area to do this research. You just have to go out on a windy day. And then you have to pay attention to how all those little things around you are being impacted. But then additionally, how you're feeling. The way that the skirt is going to blow around your ankles, very, very important to pay attention to. The way that your hair moves, the way that it feels on your skin, the way that it kind of pulls your skin back. If it's really, really windy and it makes your eyes water, maybe makes your nose kind of weird. It's a whole thing. It changes your body and your physiological structure as you are walking down the road with this heavy wind going on. So pay attention, get out there, study these things. You do not have to have like a fancy skirt. You don't have to have big long hair. You can go out in your yard. You're going to look a little silly, but it's okay. Take a, like a bed sheet and just wrap it around you and let it flap out behind you. It's going to be really different from wearing a skirt that goes all the way around you to a half skirt that is open. That The way that that is going to move and it's going to change. It's going to flap very differently. So you can do a lot of studying, a lot of research to then apply to how your characters are behaving when there's a windstorm, how your characters are behaving when there's a storm coming in, how your characters are going to be behaving if you're flying a kite, doing all of those fun things. 
The good, the bad, the in-between can be studied with the wind and how it then impacts you and the people around you. And that can be a really good thing to research in order to write stronger, better books. Because when you know how that impacts and affects things, you can write in these tiny details that makes so much sense to the reader that they didn't even know they were missing from the other writers who don't have those very small granular details inside of their story. So go ahead, grab yourself some skirts, go out and learn about the wind and how it impacts and how it moves and how it changes and how it does these things. It's a really fun way to research go out for content, and then use this again and again inside of your books. Now, if you like my skirts, which I highly recommend, these are fantastic skirts. I will link those down below for you. You can learn so much from them. But again, you can use a sheet, you can use a towel, you can use like a long trench coat, you can use, you can use whatever. You can use whatever. And if you, you know, if you have short hair and you need to know how it feels, you can grab a wig, you can put a towel over your head. It's very TikTok of us. And you can kind of get at least some of that information to see how that's going to then work for you as you are continuing to write your stories. Drop your questions down below and follow along for more unique ways that you can be studying and doing research to level up your world building inside of your books. And we'll see you in tomorrow's daily episode, helping you to make this your best author life ever with the least amount of stress on you.